Hello there, it's good to see you once again right here on My Doctor. We get excited when we sit down and talk about um, you know, topics that affect us and that is as far as our health is concerned. So what we do right here on My Doctor, just in case you're tuning in today for the very first time, is give you all the information you need to have so that you make informed choices as far as your health is concerned. And today's topic is not different. So today we'll be tackling blood donation and especially for vaccinated people. And I know right now especially with the COVID-19 pandemic a lot of people are a bit skeptical whether should we donate blood should I receive blood from let's say a person who has been vaccinated how long should I donate blood after vaccination there's a whole lot of discussion about it and of course the biggest question that so many people have is is it still safe to donate blood during um, the COVID-19 pandemic so those are some of the questions that we'll be answering on today's topic but you all know we invite your questions as well if you have any concern as well feel free to send them our way either on our social media platforms or you can give us a call the numbers are down on your screen and we'll be more than glad to answer all your questions as far as blood donation is concerned but in or during the COVID-19 pandemic so without further ado and enough of me talking <laughs> our guest is already here so it's so good to see you and to meet you um welcome to the show for the first time my doctor would love visitors thank you thank you for having me <laughs> so I hope you're feeling comfortable yes well taken care of very welcome yes. I like that and of course thank you very much as well for just sparing your time really to talk to us today um but before we get on with the discussion why don't you say hi tell the people who you are and what you do Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, my name is Dr. Grace Kiraka. Mm -hmm. I'm a consultant clinical pathologist mm -hmm. in Pisha Hospital. Mm -hmm. I'm also the doctor in charge of transfusion services in Mpisha. Perfect person to discuss this. Mm -hmm. Can we just start with like basics, right? Yes. Blood donation. And I know like for over time, yep. there's always this um, call, donate blood, yes. donate blood, donate yeah. blood. There's also a lot of Fear, as far as blood donation is concerned and also people saying no me I'm not going to donate blood I'll only donate when my family member needs it yeah. but what we don't know <laughs> is that the blood that you donate most of the time is not the one that your family member will get because there's a lot of tests that need to be done to yes, ascertain whether the true. blood is safe or not yeah. so for those people who keep saying me I'll only donate when my family member needs it <laughs> <laughs> you might want to change that but let's just go back to the basics yeah. blood donation yes what is that whole process like and why is it so essential yeah. that we hear day in day out please go and donate blood. to donate blood yeah yeah well blood donation just means i'm giving a unit of my blood mm -hmm. to somebody who who mm -hmm. needs it so there's somebody who is sick yeah. um their body's not making blood the way it's supposed to mm -hmm. maybe they've been in an accident they've lost blood lost you blood, know yeah. you know pregnant mothers come to give birth sometimes you bleed too much mm -hmm. after delivery so that blood has to be replaced yeah so somebody else is at home they're healthy they have yeah. all this blood you come and donate a unit mm -hmm. and within a few um, days or weeks mm -hmm. my body will have replaced that unit so yeah. there's nothing wrong with me donating to somebody blood. else who needs it yeah. it's important because what blood does to the body nothing else can do there's no other mm -hmm. medicine we can give to replace blood so somebody yeah. who really needs blood mm -hmm. that's the only treatment for them so yeah. we don't have an alternative so you have to give blood because it's life and there's nothing else <laughs> that we can to give do. it yeah. yeah so you said um you were right about kenyans giving blood when their family member is mm. um is sick we call yeah. them designated donors or family <laughs> donors very common i think in mpsha almost 70 percent of our donors is actually they've had somebody sick or they were visiting a colleague or somebody and then they're like oh what's an so they actually come because somebody else Someone is admitted is, yeah which is not a bad thing but mm. what happens when you have nobody admitted so yes. we have periods where the blood bank is empty there's no and blood then, and then sometimes it's busy so much blood so there's times you'll come to hospital and you'd be told we have no blood we need donors we don't yeah. have blood so what we prefer are just regular donors mm. and these are healthy individuals who give of themselves to give blood every three months mm. whether or not you have somebody admitted <laughs> whether yes. or not you know anybody who is sick just come every three and, months and do donate blood. your body will replace the the blood mm. you donate in that three months you'll be perfectly fine yeah and we do check you before you donate blood there's mm. a questionnaire you have to fill so we'll make sure that you're healthy mm -hmm. but every three months you can actually come in and donate and blood donate for blood. whole blood very comfortably you know what um 
that aspect of then nobody will only donate when someone is in need. I yeah. mean, again, there's also like a lot of stories, um, you know, in the country as far as all oh, blood is sold to, you know, other countries and a lot of people are not happy about yeah, that. True. Um, yeah, true. But I like what you said. At the end of the day, this is life. You it's know, life you're helping to, to, like, to yeah, save someone else's someone's life. life. And that so, one unit, we yes. divide it into three mm. and that blood can be given to three different people. Yes. If it's children, you can even give more because children use less blood than adults. Mm. So that one unit in an mm. adult yeah. can be divided to four babies in the newborn units. So it's, it makes a huge difference for that it little does. baby. It really does. Yeah, it really does make a difference. I think we need so. to shift our, um, our perception about giving blood and just yes. think about the lives that we're the people, saving. Yes, the people you know, and, and what we're doing to other people people i think yeah. that that would make it easier for it people will. to just come yeah. in and, and donate blood kenyans are very good when it comes to like when there's a crisis like yes. do sit we when always, it happens yes. people come in by the hundreds we had so much blood we were giving out blood to other blood banks but then yeah. now there's no now <laughs> there's nothing happening so they're not coming <laughs> so we, we we appreciate that we support people who is mm. who is born to drive it's very important yeah. but i think you also need to think of why don't i just go now i'm fine and i'm healthy donate. yeah i can donate every three months yeah how much blood do we have because like you said you're only donating a unit of your blood yeah you know because there's a lot of people who are like listen but yeah what's gonna happen like i'm yeah, giving some of this no, exactly actually, when you're donating a unit of blood that's usually about half a liter yes so you know like a half a liter soda yeah that's, it. that's all you're donating yeah your body won't even notice you won't feel anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and normally after you donate they'll give you a soda yes because if there's any need, yeah. risk is that liquid you're giving out so mm. sometimes people come to donate blood and we ask them have you eaten no okay go and eat and then come and back then Come that's back. it yeah it's just yeah. it's like doing any physical activity like going to the gym before you've eaten you'll feel dizzy yes. the same thing with blood yeah. if you haven't eaten if you're dehydrated mm. you will feel dizzy afterwards yeah. which is why blood donor centers will give you um mm. a soda yeah. but your your blood volume actually is dependent on your weight so mm. for an adult you're talking anywhere from between five to seven liters you're not going to have okay. a problem with that and yeah at the Only moment taking out half a liter and even at the moment the blood yeah. is leaving your body is already responding to that like your body is that intelligent it's Egg. working at the it's already the yes which is why for example ladies That's when you're really on your periods you don't yes. faint you don't no. fat, and you use, you're no. losing blood and some ladies lose a lot of a lot. blood but your body's yeah. like okay things are happening let me trend make up so your heart will beat a bit faster your blood pressure will change a little mm. bit your bone marrow will catch up and mm. compensate for it but the yeah. time the transfusion is finished you, you know okay. you give the person a soda and they walk back home and they're fine and when we're doing special collection like yeah. for platelets for whole blood when mm. you're collecting like platelets mm -hmm. or plasma we have a special machine you're connected to mm. that one you can even come every two weeks yeah oh, really? and donate every two weeks yeah that one is even better because we're not taking out a unit the of whole, blood yes we're just taking the cells that we need so mm. your blood volume is not affected mm. it's totally fine you can even come back every two weeks can you talk about then the components um because again yeah. for a long time we used to this idea that you're donating whole blood yes, right and yeah. then now you do not need to donate, need to donate whole blood. Whole so can blood, you just talk yeah. about then those components yes. and, and what exactly is taken is out it, yeah. yeah so your blood is basically the fluid which passes in your veins yes. and it's made of liquid and cells mm -hmm. so the liquid part is called plasma mm -hmm. that's normally well it's not clear it's like yellowish mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, then the cells there's red cells yeah. and then there's platelets mm -hmm. so red cells is what carries oxygen to your yeah. body if mm -hmm. your red cells are low that's what we say you you're anemic when mm -hmm. people say i have anemia my hb was low that's because of the red cells mm -hmm. not being able to carry oxygen and that's the yeah. most common reason for transfusion it's mm -hmm. low red cells yeah. either from bleeding or you don't have enough iron in your blood mm -hmm. or pregnant mothers like i said mm -hmm. children with sickle cells something is you know destroying your red yes. cells and your body can't keep up mm -hmm. and then the other one we transfuse is platelets mm -hmm. platelets is what stops your from your blood from clot which which makes you, your blood clot. Mm. So if you mm. cut yourself, mm -hmm. you know, you'll bleed for a few seconds and then it'll stop. Clot, yeah. So platelets, so these little cells, they come there and they block that mm. and they're the ones which stop you from, from yeah. bleeding. So okay. if your platelets are low, you would bleed. You'd mm. have a problem. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you're donating blood, you can come and donate a whole unit of blood mm. and then we'll separate the plasma and the platelets from okay. that. Or you can come to the apheresis machine, mm -hmm. which now we connect to the person's vein and it mm. removes the red cells alone mm. or removes the plasma alone or removes the platelets alone. So okay. in Kenya, the most common use for pharesis is platelets mm. because it's a very expensive machine mm. and the cassette is very expensive. Yeah. Um, but it helps us take so many platelets at one go. Mm. And if somebody's platelets are very low, we just give them one dose and the platelets come back to normal. So. How much do you need? Like 
to give out, especially for the platelets. Yeah. Do, can we quantify yeah. that? Well, what we do is we check your okay. blood before you donate platelets. So okay. we do a blood count on you. So like for a normal transfusion, they'll mm. tell you your HB has to be above 12 if you're a woman, 14 mm. if you're a man. So they'll yeah. prick you and they'll check that. Okay. And then um, for platelets, we actually do a, a blood count before and your platelet count has to be above 240, 220 mm -hmm. for you to give blood. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Um, so then for the normal, um, and, and we'll talk about then variations between okay. donating the cold blood and again what you're saying mm -hmm. you can actually donate specifics yeah, it doesn't yeah. doesn't you don't need to to do yes, a whole of the it. whole blood yeah yeah S because a lot of people like he said some will go um to a hospital right mm -hmm. i want to donate blood not because someone is sick because just, just because, because yeah. i want to donate yes, right yeah. and then they get there and um, they ask for instance have you eaten and they're like no <laughs> you know so you have to go eat and then come back yeah. which is like <laughs> too much this person's like you know what let me just go <laughs> home and dress all together no. <laughs> so can we talk about yeah. the preparations that one needs to do to go or just to blood. know before yeah. you go and donate blood what do, what do i need to do or what do i need to know okay. so that yeah. i don't go there and, and then, then i'm told no you have to you go were sick and you're not, okay <laughs> exactly so the first thing is you have to be an adult you need to be above the age of 18 we yeah. normally use a cutoff of 65. Mm -hmm. some places will say 60 years it depends okay. on where you're going so mm -hmm. but at least you need to be above 18. Okay. and as special conditions the national blood transfusion services does medical uh, blood drive comes in high schools mm -hmm. and then they'll take up to 16 years but that's just for them for us if you just walk into a hospital you should be you above 18, be 18 years 18. yeah mm -hmm. your weight has to be about 50 mm -hmm. kilos if you're underweight okay. you know yeah, yeah. there's a problem Thanks, but <laughs> if you're an adult no. and you're less than 50 <laughs> you know there's a problem, there's a problem yeah. exactly so Okay. They won't allow okay. you to do that. Okay. Yeah. They right. will tell you um, you cannot be pregnant if you're a woman mm. and you should not be breastfeeding. Oh, and if you okay. are breastfeeding, your child should be weaned for at least three months. And yeah. by weaning means the majority of the nutrition is not coming from breast milk. From you breast switch milk, them yes. so that majority is from food. If majority yeah. of their sustenance is from your breast milk, mm. it's okay. Don't you just Don't. wait, you can come yeah. back later. Yes. Why? For, um, for breastfeeding. Um, two major reasons. One yeah. is that uh, breastfeeding and pregnancy takes up a lot of iron from uh, the mother. Okay. So most okay. ladies will end up being iron deficient. Mm. Now if we take blood from you, we're just going to make it worse. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The second reason is that breastfeeding uh, because of the fluid you mm. you know in the breast milk, you get very dehydrated and your blood pressure tends to be low. Mm. So you can't give blood that's blood volume yeah. so we can't make it worse and that's yeah. why breastfeeding mothers always will drink a lot of fluid lots of mm. fluid so we can't take fluids from you yeah yeah so we'll give you time you yeah it. it will okay. give you that time yeah okay and then um you know if you're if for example if you're unwell let's say you're an asthmatic or you're diabetic mm. or hypertensive you're on medications uh we'll ask you are you on regular medications mm. for this condition is it well controlled okay or did the doctor have to change the dose recently? Mm. So if you had a reason where the dose was being changed, it means your disease may not be well controlled, we won't let you donate. Mm. So a lot of times we actually do have a checklist and we can check. So if somebody, for example, is on medicines for thyroid mm. disease mm. and they've been on the same medicines for a year, thyroid is okay, we'll mm. allow you to donate blood. Okay. Somebody who was yeah. just diagnosed, they're still having adjustment to the drugs, will tell you, you know, take your yeah, time, yeah. Not, not so it depends not. on your condition. Are you stable okay. on the management? Are you stable on the medications? Mm -hmm. There are some medications which you will not be allowed to donate, donate especially completely. yeah some okay. hormones you'll not be allowed to mm. but usually we'll be able to to mm. let you know if you just come and tell us specifically what yeah. it is if you have hiv or hepatitis you cannot donate blood mm. if you had a tattoo you have to wait six months mm. you know because of the risk of you know hepatitis <laughs> in tattoo sick or bio, yeah. but it needs to have healed completely completely yeah it needs to okay. have healed yeah okay. if you've been discharged from hospital for mm. surgery or mm. a tooth procedure we'll tell you at least give yourself 28 days okay when you've recovered from the condition okay. yeah so the, the key thing is you should be well like am yeah. i feeling well do mm -hmm. i have any reason to go to hospital mm -hmm. you know am i having any problems mm -hmm. then you will be allowed to give well okay. and contrary to what some people have asked we had mm -hmm. a patient who asked mm -hmm. she was on medication for bipolar mm -hmm. mental health mm -hmm. And yeah. there's no problem with giving drugs if you're, if you're, you know, on medication for bipolar. The mm -hmm. question is, are you well? Are you able to make this decision yes. okay? Mm -hmm. And she was fine. But somebody else who has epilepsy, medicines for seizures mm -hmm. will not allow because the medications are different. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. So all usually right. just come and ask, you know, we'll yeah. always be able to let you know. To, so, to give all the information. Yeah, because it's not just about um, the risk to the donated blood. It's also mm -hmm. you. We don't oh, yes. want to take your blood and then you get sick, you collapse exactly. from me there and, and then I'm you like, give oh, the blood. this person came to give blood, now they're a patient. <laughs> Start carrying you out. It's also for your own safety. Your so own don't safety. ever feel yeah. bad. Just say, I'm on this medicine, I'm on this. Last mm. week, nearly for new operation, this yes. or last month or whatever. Yeah, you should always... I like that because, again, know. sometimes people tend to think... Um, 
but I came. I want to give blood. Why are you? Why you know, no, you yeah, start feeling bad. But no, it's it's yeah. sometimes it's for it's, it's, it's for, for your, your safety own as good. Well. Yeah. yeah now is. let's go back to weight, yes. right? Yeah. There's some people who will tell you, listen, I'm an adult. Check, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, I have a lot of blood. Yes, true. <laughs> but I'm underweight, <laughs> <laughs> and I really want to donate. Yeah. yeah. What is it about the, the weight? weight yeah. And yeah, because someone might say, "Listen, I've never ever donated blood." Yes. It's just that I am underweight. I am underweight. Yeah. yeah. But I have. I feel I have a lot of blood. Yeah, I am well. I do not large. have any yeah. pre-existing conditions. Yeah. I'm not on any medication. Yeah. It's just that I am. You underweight. underweight. Yeah. What is this about The weight? problem is, um, it's the same reason we don't get, we don't let children and young adults donate, donate because okay. your blood volume is directly calculated from your weight and your height. Oh. So if you're small, your blood volume is also small. small. So any small removal of blood, you'll ah. feel it more than somebody who's big and tall and has more blood volume. God so is. yeah, so I get, we just have to be careful I think that's for fair. your sake. I think that's yeah, fair. that's yeah. fair. So you could be a naturally small adult. Yeah. You know, some people are just small and slim, and maybe you're four feet tall. Yeah. So of course your blood volume will be low. Mm. But if I take that unit from you, because your blood volume is less than somebody who is six foot tall and yeah. weighs eighty kilos. If yeah. I take that one unit from you, it's going to be different mm -hmm. than the way you respond. Yeah. So even if I'm like forty nine point nine. By the way, let me tell you, we are actually very strict on those things. You come with a HP of eleven point nine, we're like that's not twelve. <laughs> That's not Has 12. To be 12. Go back and come back here. Yeah. <laughs> but it, that's for your sake. For because your some people good, don't yes. know they're anemic when they yeah. come. Some people don't yeah. know that, you know, their blood pressure is mm. high. So they just come in, they get checked, and they're like, hi, oh, yeah, my blood pressure my is 160. Yeah. yeah. So it helps you too as well. So it really does, yeah. yeah. Or oh, even people it. who don't know their blood group. Yes. There's some people who tell you, ask them, what's your blood group? And they like? have no idea. I don't and know. And you should I don't know. know. In yeah. case of emergency, it might become Ex helpful. Exactly. So you should know. Exactly. Yeah. So again, it's good. I mean, even if you would not donate that day, yes. but you At still least have you know, this information. Yeah, you need to have an idea. Yeah. yeah, it does help. My question is, how accurate is this information? Because again, there's some people yeah. who would lie. Uh -huh. You know, and, and based on the information they're giving, let's say, yeah. for example, they're on medication, they would not want to say they yes, are on medication. Yeah. Maybe they've, again, had a tattoo or piercing, like you said, yeah. um, but they're not willing to give accurate information, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, is, is this a problem? Because <laughs> yeah, now, it is. Actually, just remember, one of the questions they ask on the donor questionnaire form is, are you... Um, have you had sex with multiple partners in the last one year? Yeah. Yes. And maybe you're there donating with your <laughs> exactly. mother or your spouse, and, like, and you're like, no. no. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely you can't, you can't not. Say yes. Yeah. yeah. It's true. People do yeah. withhold information. Yeah. Um, number one, if it's something which is a risk to the donor, you're putting yourself at risk. At risk yeah. yeah. So that's problem number one. Mm. But for the blood itself, we mm. will always be very careful. We always screen all the blood. Yeah. So we don't have a special screening for people with tattoos mm. or people with don't tattoos. We will screen every single unit of blood. So yeah. even if somebody says they have high, many sexual partners or they lie or they don't, mm. we'll still check we'll for still HIV, yes. hepatitis, yeah. B, syphilis, mm. malaria. Yeah. We'll okay. still check for all those things. All yeah. Right. So that, that testing is the same. It's yeah. just supposed to eliminate the risk of us having to discard unit because mm -hmm. now if you lie mm -hmm. and then the unit turns out to be HIV positive we have to throw yeah. it away so you know yeah so we're yeah. just trying not to have too much blood in the in the system mm -hmm. that cannot be used we don't have yeah. that much blood exactly we don't have we have a crisis in the <laughs> country remember like early this year or late last year, those yeah. like a huge crisis. There yes. were no blood because of hospitals. COVID. People are not coming to yes. hospitals, so even their donors were not coming. Nobody was yes. stepping near yeah. hospital. They're like, "There's COVID yeah. in the air." Mm. So people are not coming. Yeah, we <laughs> really had, oh, we had a and also even the drives. Yeah. I mean, oh, they were affected because they were, of, yeah, COVID. Because of the crowd. Not allowed a control, lot of people yeah. in there. That was a big thing. Now, can we talk about then the whole process of? Fine. So I have donated blood, right? Yeah, yeah. So what usually happens? Um, because like you said, we get instances where blood has to be discarded, which yeah. is unfortunate because yeah. we need blood in the blood blo yes. blood banks, yeah, not discard, discard yeah. them. Yeah. So what is that process like so that you get clean? Clean, Blood clean and safe. safe. Yeah, clean and it should safe. Be clean and it should yes. be safe. Yeah. yeah. So the first step is actually screening the donor. Mm -hmm. So that whole questionnaire yeah, is a way of helps. eliminating anybody yes. who will be at risk um, mm -hmm. to the donation. Mm -hmm. And then of course the donation is collected in a very you know septic. They clean yeah, your yeah. hand. They use one giving set per person. Mm -hmm. The bags are sterile. They're not opened. Yeah. So the blood goes right in and then mm -hmm. it's sealed, right? Mm -hmm. So that's just a way to make sure that the blood it's is safe, safe and there's no yeah. contamination. It mm -hmm. goes into the blood bank with mm -hmm. your sample, the person who donated. Yeah. They'll check your blood group. Even if you know your blood group, we'll always check it again. Still. Always. <laughs> Even if it's the hundred that you donated, it will be checked again. That's Still just policy. It will be checked say. again. Yes. It'll be tested for HIV, hepatitis mm -hmm. B and C, for mm -hmm. malaria, for syphilis, mm -hmm. to make sure that everything is okay. Yeah. Once 
that's okay. It's de declared, it's stamped, that mm -hmm. it's safe for use, and then it's moved to the blood bank. Okay. Um, at the same time, also, we are keeping an eye on what units are needed. So mm. there are patients who need plasma, there are patients who need packed cells. So I separate the two, okay. and then it will be stored at two different units okay. in the okay. fridge. So plasma goes into the freezer, mm -hmm. the red cells go to the normal fridge, mm. right? And then anybody who needs the blood, um, now, if I'm a patient in the ward, you've given blood, so mm. they'll take my blood sample and yours, and then they'll mm. test see them in the lab to yeah. see if they're compatible. So even okay. if they're the same blood group, mm. you might have anti antigens, which I don't have. We call them mm. rare antigens, right? Okay. So if you say my blood is O positive, mm -hmm. so or AB positive, so yeah. AB and RISA's positive are the major blood groups, mm. and then the other minor ones, which we don't talk about. Yeah. So if we are different, so we could both be O positive, but we are but different in those minor ones, our yeah. blood won't be compatible. So they'll still have to test my blood and your blood to make sure that I can take your sample, yeah. Then once there's no reaction, then yeah. I, that unit can be issued to me. That's interesting because yeah. what we always know, and I think that is why most people say, yeah, see, we come from the same family. See, we have the same blood yeah. group. Yeah, so when you fall sick, you that assume, is when I'm going to donate. Yeah. No, oh, no, there's a lot really, of... Yeah. And you also inherit your blood groups from your parents, True. right? So your dad could be A, your mom is B. Which means your siblings could be A, B, B, A, B, and O as well. Yeah. In the same family. So you could say, he's my brother. I can give him blood. No. And you're like, no. Uh -uh. You couldn't. No. <laughs> it's totally different. Everybody inherited their own antigens. Yeah. So, and it's random how you inherit. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a higher risk of finding donors among your family. But yeah. sometimes you just, that could be that yeah. one person one who person. chose to be A, B, Pekayaka, and everybody <laughs> else is O. So again, yeah, you might happens. not necessarily get blood again from, yeah. from the others. I like yeah. that because I think we don't think about it or we don't hear about that. Oh, but yeah. Because because it's done in the lab. That's in the yeah. lab. Yeah. So we just that's the lab. And as a rule, if we if you donate blood, mm. it becomes a property of the blood bank, yes. and we remove your name from it. So that unit mm. will be stored as O positive. It won't say Winnie's. Winnie's. So you <laughs> won't be told like that. We are going to really. You won't know. You're not supposed to know. You just know your dad got two units of O positive. We don't do say who it came from or why. And people sometimes want to know. Yeah. And they and we're like they no. want to trace it. They'll be like, they I donated on this so day. We say no. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, no, you no. know. Once you donated it is a That's gift you have it. given to the blood but if that unit is split into two somebody mm. else will get the second plasma yeah. and somebody else will get mm. the first one you know yeah. so you can't say it's mine it can only go it to has to go to my mother <laughs> can only go to no, no. and we actually have that in the in the, in the blood donation form so yeah. if you're not okay with it please don't donate if yeah. you're going to start harassing us mm. don't give <laughs> if you're giving give <laughs> don't forget about it. you know there's something else that i had right yeah. about the kind of blood you donate. So someone was saying, if you drink a lot, or if you are a drunkard, uh -huh. right? <laughs> and then you go donate blood. Uh -huh. So the recipient uh -huh. will be drunk. Okay. <laughs> or, and also like like in heart transplants and all those things, if yeah. this person was like an evil person and then uh, you receive their hearts, yeah. you will become all of a sudden an evil person. Yeah. We'll want to understand that. Is it a myth? Is it is there like some level of truth in it? Even if it's like this tiny. A little bit of <laughs> Yes, truth. of truth in it. But we need to go on a break right now. Of course, when we come back, there's a lot um, to talk about. And remember, like you said, with COVID-19 and, you know, vaccination drive or exercise, which is going on in the country, yeah. there's also a question of can I donate blood? when do I need to donate blood and all those questions. So we'll be answering them after this short break. You want to stay with us. All right. Welcome back. Glad you're still with us. The show is My Doctor. Just in case you're tuning in today for the very first time or just tuning in um, you know, after the break. Well, today it's all about blood donation, but of course with a special focus on vaccinated persons. Because like I said, some people might really want to donate blood, but they're like, I've just recently been vaccinated, um, you know, uh, so when is the right time to vaccinate and uh, I mean to donate blood <laughs> after vaccination and what are some of the things that we need to know about that. So of course we have Dr. Grace Kiraka today with us who is a clinical pathologist and head of transfusion right here at MPSHA. Dr. Grace, thank you very much for staying with us. That question before we went for break yeah. in terms of, yeah, if this person drinks a lot, let's yeah. not say drunkards, right? <laughs> if this person drinks a lot and then yeah. they're like, you know what, let me just go donate blood. Yeah. First of all, are they allowed to donate <laughs> blood? And that question of the person receiving the blood might end up actually start drinking, and especially if they were not drinking mm. before, yeah. right? And drinking <laughs> alcohol, not milk. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. what, are, what are some of the truth to eat? Well, okay, first of all, if you're visibly drunk, you'll not be allowed you to give cannot. blood. <laughs> you cannot give blood. Absolutely and thankfully, I, we've never had a situation like that. Okay. Yeah, okay. we've never that's had like, a completely drunk person. Yeah. <laughs> Even if we smell I alcohol, we won't let you. Yeah, no, that's, that's never happened. Yeah. Um, if somebody's a chronic alcoholic, yeah. um, 
and they come to the need blood, that would be interesting mm. because chronic alcoholism mm -hmm. is a disease. You would yeah. be sick physically. In fact, mm. most of them are anemic. The HIV is even low because um, of all the alcohol. So you yeah. might even just be dis disqualified at the mm. donor collection, yeah. uh, the donor selection area. Yes. But if you're a regular drinker and you donate blood when you're sober and you're otherwise well, that yeah. blood is not going to cause anything to, okay. the, to the donor. Right. So that's that's more of a... Um, I don't call it a habit or personality or character. It's yeah. not really something you pass on. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to the other person. But there's yes. a possibility that you can pass on some treats um, to the recipient. You know, I have patients uh, who come for regular transfusion, like okay. patients with sickle cell disease. Yeah. They don't change at all, even mm. if they've gotten a hundred transfusions since the day they were born. Yeah. So I don't, I don't have any, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any evidence that would say that there's a trait yeah. that can be passed on. But you know the way we say blood is life, so yes. people tend to think there's something deep about it. Mm. Um, like you asked me about transplanted organs, yeah. you know, um, that one is just because of TV and movies. Oh, okay. I think they yeah, show, I'm, yeah. There was a movie where somebody got a heart transplanted. They became right. evil because the person. <laughs> who gave the heart was evil. Yes. Um, in reality, no. It no. Doesn't, it doesn't happen. Okay, okay. Organ, yeah. All right, your, so your, don't be scared. Your personality remains. It's just, okay. Yeah. Because there's some people who are scared to either donate or to receive blood, yes, especially yeah. for someone you don't know completely, yeah, and then yeah. you're receiving their blood. So there's that aspect yeah. of, will I, will will I change yeah, in one way or the other? Be, I'd like yeah. that. No. Not no, at all. At no. least there's no study no. that has been done. I, I actually have no, well, no study and also patients who get regular. Yeah, like from people who are on seen. chemotherapy yeah. you know, get a lot of transfusions. Yes. They don't change their personality. At all. <laughs> They're fine. <laughs> and actually feel better. You know, if you're anemic, you give you blood, you feel like you can breathe. You yes. know, your oxygen levels go yeah. up. So actually it's a, it's actually a treatment. Feel, feel it's just like better. think of it like any other medication okay. you take. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now let's talk about COVID nineteen, right? It yeah. came in and disrupted everything. Yeah. And like you said, of course, now blood collection, again, we do Went not have, down, yeah, yeah we're, we're really, really going down yes. as far as blood connection. And even the, the exercise, like the drives, yes. again, with COVID-19 restrictions, I know they were affected. Yeah. So the big question is then, and, and so many people were scared to even go to a hospital to donate mm -hmm. blood yeah. because there's this notion that once yeah. you go to a hospital to yeah. donate blood, remember the test that we said? Yeah. COVID-19 is one of them. Oh, So wow. is it true? <laughs> is it not? Because a lot of people are scared. We're like, yeah, we I don't want to be tested for, for COVID-19. COVID. Oh, wow. <laughs> no. Oh, we don't test you for COVID. <laughs> Come give blood. Um, but also, testing for COVID isn't so bad. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. You die. It's, it's, uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable, but, uncomfortable. But we don't yeah. test it for blood uh, mm. transfusion. But they will ask you, mm. have you been sick? Have yeah. you been coughing? It's actually on the questionnaire. Coughing, fever, all those symptoms are yeah. there. But if you have been in contact with somebody who had COVID recently, mm. we would ask you just don't mm. um, donate blood. Mm -hmm. Actually, you should be isolating. If yes. you've been in contact with somebody, don't even who's, come to donate the blood. Positive, Finish exactly. your isolation first and then and come then, back yeah. when you're okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But COVID is not one of the tests we do yeah. because um, it's a respiratory virus. Mm -hmm. You spread mm -hmm. it through air, coughing, yeah. you know, droplets, mm -hmm. and it affects the respiratory system, not blood. Mm -hmm. So we, it's, it's not a blood-borne infection. Yeah. So that would not be a concern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we test for HIV, hepatitis, malaria. Those ones are passed in blood. Yeah. So that's why they have to be done. Oh, yeah. Those ones have to those be Those ones tested. have to be done, yeah. Because yeah. they actually are found in blood and they're passed on in blood. Mm -hmm. um, COVID is like a common cold. If I have a cold mm -hmm. and I donate, the mm -hmm. person is not going to get a cold. Yeah. I shouldn't donate if I have a cold, but yeah, if if by <laughs> accident, event, yes. yeah, or maybe I was incubating, I could yeah, yeah, it was still <laughs> coming slowly, and then you know, and then now the next day after I donate, I get a cold. It's yeah. not going to, yeah, it's okay. not going to pass on. It's not a blood infection. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then vaccination, right? Yeah. A lot of people received their first jab yes. of AstraZeneca and um, again in the process of either receiving the second, second one yeah. um, or whatever form of vaccine that someone was given for yeah. COVID-19. Yeah. So the question is, first of all, is it safe to donate blood after you've been vaccinated? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, it's safe. Okay. The recommendation is that you should wait seven days mm. after either the first or the second dose mm -hmm. before you come to donate blood. Mm -hmm. And that's assuming mm -hmm. you don't have any major reaction to the vaccine. Yeah. If you have a major reaction to the vaccine, mm -hmm. you're the same as somebody who is sick. The mm -hmm. donor questionnaire will eliminate you. You should yeah. not be there. Yeah. yeah. So if you have a major reaction, some people have a bit of fever, mm -hmm. headache. Most mild reactions to the vaccine are actually disappearing after 72 hours. Yes. And then you're fine after that. So mm -hmm. if by the seventh day you're okay and you need to give blood, you can come and give blood. Mm -hmm. Um, any of the of the vaccines okay. and that's because the COVID vaccines none of them is a live vaccine mm 
Mm. So live vaccines have a risk of making you very sick. Yes. Yeah, they actually mm. can cause the actual disease in the person. Mm. So none of the COVID vaccines is a live vaccine. So mm. you're quite, quite okay. safe to give it. Yeah. Um, this was initially when actually when the vaccination started, they said, yeah. don't give blood until 28 Eight days. days. And then they've changed to 14 days. Mm. And then I was saying seven days. Seven and days. that's because COVID was a new vaccine. It's yes. a new, it's, you know, it was developed very quickly and released very quickly. Mm. So they needed more time to observe people who've been vaccinated mm. before they could say, okay, now it's safe. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's wondering why the time has changed from 12, 20 days 28 to 14 to, 14, to 7, that's yes. the reason, yeah. Okay. We, we realize, oh, there's no risk. You can actually give blood. Yeah. If you didn't have a major reaction to it. You know, but someone might say, listen, but fine, COVID-19 is not bloodborne, right? Yeah. No, but then not. again, the vaccine gets into the blood. Yes, it's not a live vaccine, yeah. but it somewhat mimics the, the, the yes, virus in itself. Yeah, yes, and then it it's does. introduced into the blood. Yeah. And because you have to be injected, yes, right? Yeah. And then it's so, you know, so someone might be like, ah. <laughs> <It's still> okay. <laughs> well, first of all, um, the vaccine is supposed to induce the recipient of the vaccine to make antibodies. Yes. Right? So uh -huh. there are two ways to form antibodies. One mm. is you get the actual infection. So yes. if you get COVID, your body will produce antibodies, mm. which are the cells which fight the infection. The infection, yes. And these cells mm -hmm. are meant to be stored somewhere in your body as mm. memory cells. So the next time you get exposed to COVID, mm. your body has some sort of immunity to it. Mm -hmm. So the vaccine does the same thing by introducing a virus, uh, a protein mm. of COVID, okay. not the actual okay. virus, yes, just a little virus, yes. a protein modified mm -hmm. into your body. So your mm -hmm. body will still respond as if, oh, mm -hmm. I have COVID, mm -hmm. produce antibodies. So that now when you get the actual actual COVID, mm. your body is able to fight it. So okay. the only thing my body has is antibodies. Mm. I don't get the COVID from the COVAX. Yes. I get antibodies. So if yes. those antibodies are passed on, that's not risky. In fact, that's, that should be good. If mm. I pass on antibodies to you, mm. that should be safe. That's yeah. what pregnant mothers pass on to their to babies, their babies in the first yes. two years of life. They pass mm. on antibodies. They give you immunity like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is vaccinated and they donate blood or somebody got immunity and then they donate blood maybe a month, two months later, mm -hmm. If they actually have enough antibodies, that would be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wouldn't be a bad thing. Yeah. And that's what we were trying out early in the pandemic when we were giving convalescent plasma. Mm -hmm. Plasma from people who've recovered. They mm -hmm. would make appeals and say, please come and donate your plasma so that yes. those antibodies may help somebody who's yeah. suffering, suffering in ICU. Yeah. 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 So, okay, fine. So then yeah. does it make or yeah. guarantee the safety? Yeah. of the recipient uh -huh. because again like you said now that you have antibodies right yes, and yeah. then you're able to let's say pass it on to again a patient yeah right? so does it protect me from contracting COVID-19 because you have the antibodies yeah received it from a person who was vaccinated um <laughs> okay so if you're the recipient of my blood exactly. so I got the vaccine you haven't gotten the vaccine yes. and okay. then I receive your blood yes. right yeah so does it mean that I am safe now you're from COVID-19 <laughs> Go about not wearing yeah. my mask. Oh, have I the antibodies. Wish. Oh, I wish. That would make our life so much easier. Right? <laughs> we just need to do it. Transfusing everybody in the world. Um, no, unfortunately, no. it's not enough to. Yeah. Okay. We need to stimulate your own body to produce the antibodies. Mm -hmm. That's why even in, in uh, newborn children, mm. the antibodies they inherit from their mother only last a few months. And that's mm -hmm. why you have to vaccinate babies before they reach the age of two years, mm -hmm. three years. That's why you start early. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't last very long because yeah. your body doesn't have any memory of seeing any COVID mm -hmm. protein. So oh, yeah, it might yeah. benefit from the antibodies circulating a little bit, but in a few months they'll be destroyed, they'll grow old and die, but your mm. body won't remember. Mm. So vaccine is supposed to stimulate that memory, so that no matter how many years or months later, mm -hmm. your, your immune cells remember this particular protein. So if mm. they see it, they can respond to it. Okay. Yeah. So you would still need to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because a lot of people are like, ah, hey, let's see uh, oh, That would be nice, actually. Was, that would right? be nice if they prove that. But yeah, passive immunity doesn't really last mm. very long. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. there's a chance. A little bit. A little bit. Actually, okay. the plasma, the trials they were doing <laughs> with convalescent plasma initially was yes. very promising, but then later they were like, oh, it's not so promising mm. if you're very sick. Yeah. So there was a window of which you were supposed to get the ah, plasma. If you okay. pass that window, it wasn't they, helping it wasn't anybody. Yeah. So it was also not like 100% okay. in those patients. Yeah. What about so. they give you that, right? Mm -hmm. Look at me. And then <laughs> <laughs> they give you the donated blood. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can then <laughs> guarantee immunity. Yes. No, Same from maybe. me, from a donor. Yes. Uh huh. If you give that blood to yes to a patient to a patient, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Or not even like the whole blood, but let's say for instance like the plasma. plasma. Yeah, yes. the convalescent plasma. Yes. Yeah, that's then, what was being done. Yeah. yeah. So you don't give it to let's say a person who's like very very sick from yeah. COVID nineteen. Yeah. But um, let's say in the 
like they, they have like mild symptoms yeah, actually yeah. that was where yeah. the benefit was yeah. yeah yeah they were saying there was some benefit mm -hmm. in those patients mm -hmm. but even then in those patients they were still giving it in addition to other treatments it ah. wasn't like the only thing okay. which was working it mm -hmm. was like because everybody was panicking over covid nobody yes. knew what's working yes. how to treat it there was such a high mortality so mm -hmm. they were like combining different mod mod modalities to, to it yeah. yeah but i think now mm -hmm. it's still not even done mm -hmm. like as much as mm -hmm. it was in the beginning mm -hmm. because they said well the benefit might not be so much yeah. so i think now the focus is just to vaccinate people mm -hmm. if you can prevent them getting to that severe mm -hmm. covid phase that's that's good enough yeah yeah okay yeah. so fine so let's reverse okay. right yeah. so suppose i had covid 19. yes um went through the, the treatment process mm -hmm. i am okay you recovered yeah. can i yeah can i donate blood you would have to wait 28 days, 28 days. until okay. you, from your when you got a negative pcr mm, because we okay. normally encourage people to go back and get a negative test mm. after they finish the isolation after the yeah. symptoms disappear so if you went back and got a repeat test and it's negative you have mm. to wait a full month mm -hmm. and then after that you can donate, you can donate if blood. you did okay. not uh, get a test mm. for whatever reason it's expensive it's uncomfortable mm. nobody wants to go back mm -hmm. and get that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because some people just recover and they're like, ah, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm good. good. Thanks. You come back to work. <laughs> we'll tell you to count from when you got the last, your last symptoms, okay. like the last day you were symptomatic, mm -hmm. yeah, and then count 28 days on from that. Yeah. Okay. So either way, give yourself a full month, no yeah. symptoms. And by that time, mm -hmm. um, by that 20 days, you should have fully recovered mm -hmm. because some patients with COVID are not recovering yeah. right away. So you might, yeah. if you're still tired, you still have headaches, mm -hmm. you're not recovered. You're, that's still a symptom. Yeah. So just relax. <laughs> some patients <laughs> actually take pretty long to recover from yeah. COVID unfortunately like three four months later and they're still, still yeah, yeah not fatigue recovered. and headache and, and then the cough sometimes the cough mm -hmm. doesn't go away right away mm -hmm. so if you have any of those symptoms you're not recovered just stay already, yeah. so you'd have to have the last of your symptoms gone yeah and then you give gone yourself 30 a full 30 days yeah. yeah 28 days wait so fine yeah. so suppose I have recovered right yes um give myself a full month yeah um again I am okay yeah and then go donate blood yes and then a few days later mm -hmm. i start noticing the symptoms okay somewhat like a recurrence of covid 19. Yes, yeah, yeah again is is that a risk yes maybe, actually the yeah. recommendation is mm -hmm. that if you donate blood mm -hmm. and then you get sick in the following week mm -hmm. fever flu like like i said before maybe you're incubating something yeah. and you didn't know you're supposed to notify the blood bank and we will have ah. to discard that unit yeah oh. we'll have to discard it so you have to call us and tell us i gave blood i was fine but you know something yeah. maybe i was i had a flu i didn't know i had yeah. maybe i had something which you know i did i was incubating i maybe i just got home and started vomiting so i didn't yeah. know i had a stomach infection or something yeah. like that yeah so you're actually supposed to notify the blood bank that unit though. should be discarded we recall it yeah how then do you know because remember yeah. like you said once it gets into yeah the blood, blood yeah yes to the blood right bank, yeah it's no longer yours and of course your name yes. is removed yeah. right yeah. and then only the blood type is yes is, the is, number, is yeah. we'll give or the number. number. Yeah. yeah so then how do you know we, we we can always trace the blood the number oh, you can? the blood bank we can trace it back to the donor okay. even if somebody gets blood we can always trace it back to the donor mm. where the donor came from we've had rare cases where um that happens and mm -hmm. then the blood was already transfused you know like blood is a very precious commodity so sometimes you transfuse today and it's transfused in the evening like you, yes. you donated today and by evening is and then the person says hey yeah i got a flu the next day or something and then now we have to go to all the recipients who got that unit and follow mm -hmm. them up and see if they get sick yeah. yeah and advise them so we always have to be able as much as we anonymize them we remove the yeah. identity from the person in such this, cases we have to be able to trace it back to the unit yeah. and, and see it yeah, yeah. that's good yeah. i mean if you can trace it back we I always think, trace it back yeah. yeah and if any of the screening tests comes back positive Positive, like maybe somebody didn't know they were HIV positive mm -hmm. and the test comes back positive we'll call you back and tell you yeah yeah before we discard the unit so now you can go get pre-test counseling and tested and then to be put on treatment so we'll tell you if anything comes back positive okay yeah do you then notify the recipient mm -hmm. because I imagine that might cause panic mm -hmm. I mean especially with COVID-19 right and mm -hmm. then someone let's say like we said recovered mm -hmm. waited for 28 yeah. days yeah. and then um, went and donated blood and then that was again it was transfused right yeah. Yeah. 
and then you, the person calls and says they got a fever yes, and they, they got a fever yes. <laughs> yeah. so do you notify the recipient we notify them through their doctor because the doctor is not supposed to monitor the patient okay. for any okay. reactions okay. Um, but even then um, the risk is very small okay. because by this point mm. we are not looking for any blood wound infection this mm. is a respiratory virus true, maybe true. a stomach right. infection right. so yeah. the risk of the person of it being passed on is, is pretty minimal but mm. we'll always notify the doctor and the doctor will tell you and they'll keep an eye on you okay yeah and see it because i'm trying to imagine it's, like cause panic like so yeah, it's like it does no it's very it's very rare see? actually because yes. i think by the time somebody is coming to give blood you know mm. amegitola they actually are known yeah. they're okay yeah, they wouldn't just do yeah, it. Yeah, they wouldn't just do it yeah. if they had anything There's not like a ulterior there. motive. Yeah, and yeah. the ones we actually are very 100% mm. are worried about is blood-borne infections. Yes. Anything that's not in blood, there's a very minimal risk mm. of it being passed on. But we'll yeah. still be careful. We always try to be careful yeah. with, the, with the recipients. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, and especially, yes, so for then, for the blood-borne, um, again, illnesses yeah. or, or diseases. Yeah. So then what happens in, in, in such an instance where like yes it is very rare mm -hmm. almost doesn't yeah. happen because again there's all these steps yeah, to make sure yeah. that the Usually blood is sweet right know there. Yeah. but just in case it happens <laughs> yeah what happens do you introduce treatment to this person like for instance if it's malaria or yeah. something like that yeah do you introduce treatment to this person so that then they don't get Sick yeah. or even sicker. This is now yeah. the, the donor. Yes. Yeah, because mm -hmm. before the blood is screened, it can't be issued to a patient. In fact, mm -hmm. it's even put in, like, in a different uh, fridge. Yeah, all together. It's not yeah, as long yes. as it's not been stamped that it's safe yet. So the blood is kept there until everything comes back negative. Okay. Okay. We've picked mm -hmm. up HIV, rarely mm -hmm. picked up hepatitis B, mm -hmm. picked up malaria once or twice. Mm -hmm. Somebody had a low parasitemia, malaria, mm. and they were not sick, they were from the leg side, so they yeah. walk around with their malaria and they're fine. <laughs> they have no idea that they're sick. And it's like, what? I have malaria. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. So we usually, we, we call them and we let them know, mm -hmm. and then we refer them to, uh, mm -hmm. for treatment because, okay. you know, this is now they're getting the call from the blood bank. Mm. So they will either tell them to come back to casualty mm. and see the doctor, or they go back to the nearest hospital and get treatment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, but their blood has to be then discarded. It has to be discarded. You yeah. cannot it give it to, to the... Be, no, to, it can't be left there yeah. yeah it has to be safe for you to be in the in the in the fridge yeah yeah do you discard like a lot no no it's very rare <laughs> <laughs> very rare it's very rare yeah yeah it's like less than probably like 0 0.1 percent it's actually very rare yeah yeah okay. but, but then again it's because mm -hmm. by the time you're coming to give blood you know you'll be tested for those things yes so most people are very comfortable mm. they know the hiv status they, they know yes. hepatitis they, yeah so mm -hmm. they yeah people who are not sure i will not come give blood <laughs> It's almost really like cool. a long list yeah. of tests. So sort of people pre-qualify pre themselves. Yeah. So it's actually pretty rare. Okay. Yeah. Now, for case of, um, I'll just ask like HIV, right? right? Yeah. So I have been on, for instance, I have been on medication. Mm -hmm. um, I am okay. Uh, mm -hmm. My viral load, again, is undetected. Yeah. Um, so, and, and we all know the undetectable. Is it and yeah, undetectable, undetectable yeah. equals undetectable. untransmissible, yes, right? Yeah. So some might be like, so fine. I have been on medication, done mm -hmm. all those things. Yeah. I am at that phase where yeah. it is undetected. Is exactly. Yeah. Can they then um, donate blood? No, no. That one, the law just says, as mm -hmm. long as your HIV um, test was positive at any time. Yeah. Even hepatitis B, mm. even if it was 30 years ago, yeah. you still cannot donate blood. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right. that's still the law and that's what we go yeah. with. So I think even if there's a very small risk mm -hmm. for the blood bank, it's not worth it, I guess. Yeah. For them, it's, yeah. So mm. for, for blood borne infections, it's yeah. if you're ever positive at any time, at even any if you're well point. and you're well controlled. Mm -hmm. And lots of patients with HIV are very healthy and very well controlled. Yeah. And Absolutely, yeah, especially now. Yeah, yeah, quite a lot, mm -hmm. but they will still not be allowed to give blood. To, because to once the screening test says HIV positive, that mm -hmm. blood has to be discarded. Yeah. yeah. Whether okay. or not the viral load is there. Is, is there on, yeah, on, or, or not. not. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. And, and yeah, because a lot of people might say that, you know what, yeah, yeah I, I want um, to give blood. Yeah, yeah, I want to help. I want yeah. to give blood. Let's say my family member is unwell. I would want to give blood. True. No, unfortunately, that's not a risk that the blood transfusion services would be yeah, willing to take. We want to take. True. Okay. Yeah. Then. Um, so for COVID-19, again, like you said, as long as you've been vaccinated, whether it's the first dose or second dose, wait, yeah. wait seven, days. Seven, days, seven days, seven days, and then yeah. you, you'll be able to, yeah. to. But then some people will be like, yeah, but can I receive blood mm -hmm. from, let's say, someone who's not been vaccinated? Um, Yes, you can receive blood from somebody who's not been vaccinated. And let's say you have been vaccinated yourself. Yes, you can. Okay. Yeah, you can. Because if I'm vaccinated and I'm receiving blood, either I'm anemic, I need mm. blood, red cells, mm -hmm. or my platelets are low. Mm -hmm. So I need the platelets. 
Yeah. So just give me the pain. You can't choose. I can't choose. <laughs> Especially <laughs> since in Kenya we've only vaccinated how many yes. people? Yes. We still have very low mm-hmm. numbers of vaccination. Mm-hmm. So we can't refuse blood on those grounds. Yeah. We haven't reached that point of <laughs> we'll be like, no yeah. thanks. When we're we reach good. 80% <laughs> vaccination rate, then we can start saying, oh no. Do we need to no now, no, now we're still pretty far. Yeah. And actually the people who are being vaccinated now yeah. are not the eligible donor pool. Because yes. we actually vaccinate, okay, health workers, remove health yeah. workers. We are vaccinating people who are sick. Yes. And the elderly, they yes. can't donate blood anyway. Yes. <laughs> They're not donors anyway. So our okay. actual okay. donor pool are not vaccinated. Yeah. So yeah, okay. that, that wouldn't be a problem. All it's right. Fine, yeah. Okay. So you you said earlier on that again, uh, thankfully for COVID nineteen yeah. vaccine, it's not a live. Um, yeah, no, it's not a live it's, vaccine. It's not a live yeah. vaccine, right? Yeah. So someone might ask them. So what's the difference between like COVID nineteen, mm-hmm. um, you know, antibodies that yeah. you develop from exposure to the virus, yeah. and the one um, that you develop, you know, as a reaction to the vaccine. Is yeah. there like a difference between the two? Yes, two <laughs> major differences. Mm-hmm. Um, the first difference is that if you get exposed to COVID and mm-hmm. your body produces the vaccine, I mm-hmm. mean antibodies, yes. everybody produces antibodies yeah. to any infection, the common mm-hmm. cold or flu, your body will produce antibodies. Yeah. Um, the problem is with COVID, they don't seem to last very long. Mm-hmm. Some patients, they last between six to eight months, other patients even less. Yeah. That's why we have a short number, a small number of people who've mm-hmm. gotten COVID twice in the same mm-hmm. year. <laughs> they got COVID, they recovered, yeah, and they get it again. And then they're still again. sick the second yeah. time. It's like the body didn't remember it had this COVID. <laughs> so that, that's been one of the problem with COVID yeah. that the antibodies are not lasting very mm-hmm. long. But mm-hmm. with the vaccination, they're estimating the, vac- the antibody should last between two to three years. Mm-hmm. So there's a possibility we'll be told to get a booster. Even oh, if yeah. you're fully vaccinated, we might be told to go back every year or every two years. Because mm-hmm. now they have to follow up with the patients, the yeah. people who are getting vaccinated to see how long are these antibodies lasting? So yeah. we know for sure, yeah. Some diseases, you know, like hepatitis, you get mm-hmm. your three doses and then you're told you're fine. Mm-hmm. Some others, you'll be told come for a booster. Mm-hmm. So they need to follow up the COVID that mm-hmm. gets the vaccine to know how it is. So that's the difference. Mm-hmm. Natural mm-hmm. infection with COVID, mm-hmm. antibodies are unpredictable. Yeah. Some patients produce high titer, others yeah, very low. Others, low, others yeah. last for a short time, others last for long. And we can't tell yeah. who is going to. So even yeah. if you've had COVID, you'll be told just get vaccinated. Because mm. you don't know where you fall. Yeah. <laughs> you could be the unlucky ones who have <laughs> antibodies for two weeks in the case. So now, just go get you vaccinated. To, yeah. Yeah. The other difference is mm-hmm. that um, w- with natural infection, mm-hmm. you know, you get the full COVID in your body. Mm-hmm. But then with the vaccine, you're only getting a small protein yeah. introduced. Yeah. So the type of antibodies being produced are different. If mm-hmm. you give me the vaccine, mm-hmm. like me, I had AstraZeneca, my yeah. body's only producing um, antibodies against that protein, mm-hmm. part of the COVID. But okay, somebody who okay. got the infection will yeah. have a wider variety of antibodies because antibodies. then they saw the whole virus. Yeah. You know? So it's like if I'm um, the whole virus, so maybe the vaccine is just the shoes. <laughs> so my body okay, will okay, produce okay. vaccines again, the shoes. So if yes. I come in and I'm the COVID, mm-hmm. I'll still be attacked because yes. the body will still recognize the shoes and attack me. Mm-hmm. But somebody who got the infection, it's like they've seen the whole body. So they'll yeah. have antibodies against the shoes, the, the, the nails, the hair, the teeth, yeah. the mgongo, the stomach. Everything. So you have a wider variety of antibodies with natural yeah. infections because your body has time to study the virus mm. and have different. But with vaccine, your body will produce antibodies against the protein the which protein, is presented yes, to them. In itself. Yeah. Okay, so then let's say then the type of vaccine that you're given is somewhat like a factor yes, in this? Yes, it will be different, yeah, yeah, depending on what protein they're using. Although I think now most of them are using pretty much the, the same, same part of the protein. It has to yeah. be a part of the vi- virus mm-hmm. where as long as that's recognized, the mm. whole virus will be destroyed. Like it can't be like a little bit. Yes. It needs to be like a significant part yeah. of it. So the difference with the vaccines is maybe how it's being delivered. Others mm. are mRNA viruses. Yes. Others is linked to a virus and mm. just how the body will, will respond to it. Yeah. The type of vaccine also affects the vaccine response. Mm. And that's why you hear some vaccines uh, have more efficacy than others. Others, others, they produce yeah. a stronger immune response and then As others maybe a bit the less yeah. but at least the um, what is agreed is that all vaccines will protect you from severe COVID, yeah. from needing oxygen, from yes. being in ICU, and from death, which mm. is fine. Good. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Which, which is, is good. good. We <laughs> can funny. come to the body to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that, <laughs> that, that, that's good rest. enough. You're not good. You're not good. You're, you need to go to ICU. You won't take oxygen. Yeah. You won't die. That's fine. That is really yeah, good. That's still okay. Yeah. Would the case be different if we had like a live vaccine yeah. for COVID 19? Wow, so the problem with live vaccines is that they make you sick, <laughs> which is why everybody's moving okay. away from live vaccines. Yeah. And that's why they say technology should be in such a way that you have a deactivated part of the, mm, the virus, of which the is virus. not active. Yeah. Active enough to produce an immune response, but not active enough to make, to you, make sick. you sick. Yeah, that's yeah. enough. Yeah. I think that is so that's why a lot of people had then reservations about yes. going and getting vaccinated because yeah. they're like, listen, I'm going to get... What are the chances that I might contract might COVID-19 COVID, and then yeah. I go get vaccinated? And then people thought you'll get a chip inside you and the government is tracking you through the vaccine. So there's a whole bunch of 
stories. And then, yeah, the yeah. And okay. then people now are scared because mm. the vaccine was developed relatively quickly compared yeah. to other mm -hmm. diseases. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of mistrust. Like, how did you make this yes. vaccine in mm -hmm. six months? Mm -hmm. How do we trust it? Safe? <laughs> did you really do the study? It yeah. will make us so sicker. Also, it will make us yeah, infertile. There's, there's a lot of concern. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of, of that. There's a lot yeah. of concern. But I think we have enough people now who've got sent the yes. vaccine. Yeah. And we're fine. Yeah. So the rest of you can follow. Yes, <laughs> we can go and get it. Health workers will get it. We're guinea pigs. We're fine. So you can also... Join us. Go ahead, yes. Yeah. Because again, the more people, um, exactly. the more people vaccination, the, numbers, the better yeah. for all of they us. They know, yeah. You know, yeah. at least we'll, we'll, we'll be safe. Yeah. Okay, That's so true. we have to end the show. Like, time flies yeah. when you're having an amazing conversation, but it's all good. Yeah. So, as far as just wrapping this all up, mm -hmm. um, um, and especially for those people, let's say, who tuned in late and they're yeah. like, uh, yeah, I'm not vaccinated. Can I receive blood from someone who's been vaccinated? Yeah. All those, you know, questions as far as donating blood um, yeah. and vaccination is concerned. Yeah. What would you say? as we finish the show. Um, okay, so I would say, please donate blood. <laughs> blood is life, it's very important. Yeah. It cannot mm -hmm. be replaced. Mm -hmm. If you're healthy and you're an adult and mm -hmm. you're otherwise well, please donate blood. Mm -hmm. um, you can donate blood every three months mm -hmm. if you're giving whole blood donation. Mm -hmm. If you've been vaccinated, mm -hmm. wait seven days, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the first dose or the second dose, mm -hmm. and assuming you're perfectly well, mm -hmm. you, can do, you can receive blood from somebody who's been vaccinated. It's perfectly safe. Mm -hmm. And even if you've not been vaccinated, your blood is still you know, you still have the cells somebody yep. needs. So don't mm -hmm. let that be a discouragement. You can still give blood. Yeah. Yeah. In like safe. 30 seconds, what are the benefits of blood donation to the donor? Yeah. I know we need to end the show like right now, but uh, yeah. 30 to more the seconds. donor. Yes. Oh, you're giving a gift. You're giving the gift of life. I don't think there's any better reward than that. Right. <laughs> it does right. help. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, giving blood stimulates your bone marrow to produce blood. Yeah. Because your blood will sense I've lost a unit. So it actually mm. keeps your blood active and mm. more energetic. It's a good yeah. thing, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. To give blood. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But just. The fact that you're saving lives. Yeah, I think yeah that is like that's the most it. And more than one life. Yeah. Like I told you, we separate the blood, we distribute it. So you, you can know. save multiple lives. Yeah. I think that is like, like you said, the most rewarding is, gift that yeah. someone can actually Absolutely. get instead of asking, what am I getting? Donating blood. I mean, we'll, <laughs> you're we'll saving give you, lives. We'll give you a sword and lots of thanks. <laughs> but you're saving lives. <laughs> you're saving. Yeah. Let's go with this in English. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Grace Kiraka, clinical pathologist and also head transfusion right here at MP Chef. Thank you very much. Thank really, you. really Thanks appreciate your me. time. Such Thank a fun you. conversation, but of course, very educative. Um, at the same time, and especially in the wake of COVID-19, where, again, a lot of people are scared to either go donate blood or even sometimes to receive blood. But we have the information now. So please go donate blood at the end of the day. Go donate blood. So we'll see you on the next episode. My name is Winnie Lubembe. As always, remember to stay safe and God bless. See you soon.